Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's Talkie Box, the snack that smiles back. Ho, 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 ho. Mm. Where did we originally come up with that from? Um, our heads? Yeah, but it's... Definitely an original slogan. Yeah, we made that up. We that's, make up all our slogans. That's, uh, that's, that's not goldfish, right? <clears throat> no, Absolutely. they're not a sponsor. No. no. You can't eat goldfish. I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. You can eat goldfish. And they certainly don't smile back. And no. I think if you swallow them whole, they will grow to the size of their environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not very big. I'm pretty. No, it's not. I don't see why that would be wrong. Okay. Okay. All That's right. been established then. Yes. Something Gold about goldfish. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. 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 But it's it's an established goldfish thing. Yeah. 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 But more importantly, talkie box. Uh huh. The snack that smiles back. Right. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm Dave, and with me as usual, Jason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Justin. Jason, as dumb as it gets. <laughs> Jason, as dumb as it gets. Oh, and yeah. Justin. Hey. As dumb as they come. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not disputing that? Cool. What's been going on? Uh, I mean, I've had a string of bad health yeah. issues in the family. Uh but I don't really want to talk about that on the show. Okay. I had a birthday. You did? Yeah. This is true. You did have a birthday. <clears throat> yep. I had a birthday. I'm older now. Older and wiser. Did you celebrate? Oh. Sort of. I mean, I didn't have a party or anything. We were, we were we LARPed this weekend, and then uh, a friend of mine had an extra ticket to Matchbox 20 and Counting Crows, Yep. so yep. I went to that. Cool. Went, had a fun little how, concert uh, experience. How was that? The the matchbox Counting Crows. Counting Crows is actually kind of disappointing. Really? Uh, they they went first okay. and had what I felt was a pretty short set, and then they didn't play Mr. Jones or Accidentally in Love. Really? Which is one of my favorite Counting Crows songs. Which uh, from what I hear, they don't even like that song. Um, <laughs> which is odd to me. What about Big Yellow Taxi? They play that one. They didn't play that either. What wow. About, um, yeah. Blackwing Bird. I don't even know that one. The the in the belly of a black wing bird. You're so. Are you in the band? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe you should play that song. I I am actually the first person that started counting crows while they were playing. Really? Yeah. How many How many did you get up to? I got up to like fourteen. That's a lot of crows. They had a problem. Yeah. <laughs> they had a crow problem. Crow I've never been like. Problem. I've never. I don't dislike Counting Crows, but I've never been like a huge Counting Crows fan or anything. Um, Matchbox Twenty, I did like a lot growing up, like in high school and stuff. And they they played a great set. It was like a full two hour set. Fantastic job. I loved Mr. Jones. I was a big fan of Mr. Jones, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because gray is my favorite color, and he talks about that in the yeah in the song. Yeah. Uh, I love. Do you also want to pass as a cat? Yes. Yeah. Um, there's. It's uh, in the in the service of the queen. I think that's the name of the song I'm trying to think of. Oh, really? In the know. service of the queen, I belong anywhere but in between. I'm guessing they didn't play it. Uh, if they like, there's a lot of songs. Like I said, I've never been a huge fan of them, so I don't know a lot of their songs. It was a lot of so. emotional kind of songs. Mm -hmm. They, yeah. it's real hard to dance. To Long Counting December. Crows. I know. Do they play Long December. Uh, yeah, it's real hard to dance to Long December. <laughs> it's been a I think Whoa. they did play Long December, um, which is a real it, slow, sad kind of song. <laughs> yeah, they they did they definitely played Long December. I don't, I don't know why I say that. It's reason they to believe. Did. Um, they Maybe they played year. like two or three songs I recognize. One of them being Long December, and then all one stuff I didn't really know. Um, but yeah, good show though. Hot, hot in Atlanta right now. Hot Atlanta. Yeah, they don't call it that. Rob <laughs> Thomas did call it that, and we were all like. No, uh, no, Rob, come on! You can't be, you can't be doing that. It's it's fire right now. It's <coughs> it's literally on fire. Yeah, and then torrential downpours, and then on yeah. fire again. Yeah, it's more like on steam. Yeah, the humidity is there. It's mad I will humid. definitely yeah. say that it's yeah. awful because it's only like you know ninety five, ninety six, or whatever. Yeah, but in this it. humidity, yeah, I mean at the at the LARP event. I went naked pretty much the entire event, <laughs> day and night, yeah. uh, with just like boxers and wrap pants on, right. because I put a shirt on 
and an hour later it's soaked through it's saturated yeah it is weighing me down like yeah i take it off i wring it out and then i think i'm not putting that back on my body yeah and then at at larp i tend to work in the kitchen a lot which is makes it even hotter yeah I wouldn't. So, <laughs> I wouldn't. I just. Well, that wouldn't. sounds terrible. <laughs> it's pretty rough, man. I'm well, I'm used to doing that from from current day job, but like, but still, it's it's rough, man. Like just the whole time, like trying to cut some chicken or something and not sweat directly into it. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. Yeah. So I didn't. Just so you know, I didn't sweat directly. Into not it. that you know what day job Salted is. Salted that chicken up real. Good. I mean, at the at the LARP, you know, we have a lot of our LARPers watch us. Oh well, then yeah, you de- he definitely <laughs> sweat in the chicken. All in it. Um, and then went bowling last night. That's how you gain some a, of his power. A bunch of a bunch of work friends went bowling. Had a good time. Did you win? No, no. I'm bad at bowling. Yeah. Yeah. You use the kitty bumpers? <clears throat> nope. No. No. You should. Don't use kitty bumpers. I don't use the 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 big red dragon slide thing that they have at uh, Stars and Strikes. The granny bowl. You ever tried granny bowl? I've tried it. I've mm-hmm. tried. You know, I've done some. I've done a little bit of trick bowling here and there. Like, little granny bowl. Little. Like, like trick bowl around the leg kind of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. that always hurts somebody. Uh, you always <laughs> you always clip a knee with that. Yep. Um, Nothing like a twelve pound sledge <laughs> to the back of the leg. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I I used to be way better at bowling. I don't know what happened, but like I've just just progressively gotten worse over the years. It's one of those things that's like, it's you have to practice All not the a time. whole lot, All but you time. have to practice. But I go, I I've been doing it every Monday night. For a while now, and I feel like if you're going into it with sort of a a level of competitiveness, you're more likely to do better. Whereas a lot of times people just go to bowl just to be doing yeah. something with their friends, and the like win or lose. Like very rarely do people get cutthroat competitive over right. bowling. Usually, it's just like, oh, I hope I see, make a hundred points. <laughs> see, ours is kind of the same thing. Like both both things. Like. We, you know, several of us are very competitive, and there, there are times where I've, I've had really good games, and I, and I have come out on top. Um, last night, not one of them. No. <laughs> Do you know how bowling is scored? Yeah. You actually, I can, I can, I can physically score bowling. I don't, I don't have to have the computer. Okay. But yeah, very rare skill. Yeah, because when uh, I have no my, clue. My first year of college, I actually took uh, bowling classes as my PE classes. I took bowling one and two, and you had to know how to score bowling in order to pass the class. Yeah. Well, so. well, go ahead and clue in the audience, because there's a good chance that our audience bowls, mm-hmm. and they have never actually it's, known yeah. how that scoring works. It's it's hard to explain just verbally how to do it without having something in front of you, but basically is every frame, there's ten frames in a game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first nine frames, you get two chances uh, to, to roll your ball and hit all the pins. If you get all of them at once... On the first roll of the of the frame, that's okay. called a strike, a strike. Yep. and that's what and that's scored as ten plus the next two balls you roll, mm-hmm. whatever they are. Um, the next two balls you roll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You get the entire next frame after a strike mm-hmm. to compile to your strike score, or or even the one after that if you got a strike both times. Yeah. So uh, if you roll once and you don't get all the pins, and then you roll and get the rest of the pins the second time, that's a spare. And that, that counts as 10 plus your next one ball, the very next ball you throw. If you get a gutter ball, then it's then you just got 10. You just screwed yourself out of a perfectly good spare. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you get if you get a spare and then a strike, you just got 20 points. Yeah. You know. um, the 10th frame, uh, if you get a spare or a strike with your first or second ball, you get to go another time. So you actually – you technically get three turns in the last frame. Yeah. Okay. So the most points you can get in any game is 300. Uh, that's considered a perfect game. Uh, if if we, like I said, if I had like the grid or something, I could show you how to score and stuff like that. And but three strikes is a turkey. Called a turkey. Yep. Gobble, gobble. Do you know why? Mm-mm. Me either. Mm-mm. Sure don't. No. Nope. I also don't know why it's called a strike because you think three strikes and you're out, right? Yep. Uh, nope. If you equated it to baseball. Yeah. Yeah. Strikes. Justin? Oh, I thought you had a question. You're striking? Striking. Yeah, no. Um, now, I, I came up with something last night, actually, which would be what I would consider to be the perfect game, which I think would be harder than getting 300, is getting 10. Like, getting a 10 for your entire game, hitting one pin, only one pin each frame. I think that would be incredibly difficult to do. 
I would like to see someone try. Because the chances of only getting one every time consistently and not having that one like knock over some others, that'd be pretty difficult. Yeah, you'd obviously just have to clip the seven or the ten pin yep. every time yep. like, because any other action down there is going to create yep. a domino effect. That, that would be a difficult game. Yeah. But, but my guess is strike would be like you knocked them all down in a single strike. Like, whereas I suppose. spare would be like it took you an extra ball, yep. a spare ball, mm -hmm. to knock them all down. Right. Uh, whereas, as far as turkey, I couldn't even speculate. Not a clue. Yeah. Uh, it's probably something stupid. <laughs> probably is. <laughs> kind of like a hat trick in hockey, which I under I know where that came from, but I don't know why it happened. How, explain, because I, I know what a hat trick is. It's where three people touch the puck before. No, no, no. A hat trick is when I'm pretty sure it's when one one player gets gets three points. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Three scores in a row. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking of something else. And that's considered a hat trick. And that's when it, apparently it, like everyone in the stands used to just throw their hats into the rink. I don't know why. Seems like a good way to lose a hat. Because I think soccer is similar. Is I it? think soccer has like if if one guy scores three in a row. Then I think that is also a hat trick, but it might be. It may have come from hockey. Yeah, I think soccer is older, but I don't uh, legitimately know. I feel yeah. like it should be older, but who knows? Did you, did what you I can tell up? you, I did look something up. I was looking up uh, some bowling terms. Yeah. Okay. So three strikes bowled consecutively is known as a turkey. Turkey established. Any longer string of strikes is referred to by a number affixed to the word bagger. So four bagger, five bagger, okay. six bagger, uh, and then ESPN commentator Rob Stone created the name Hambone to describe four consecutive strikes. Okay. Now on the let uh, now there's a legend that says that the name Turkey came from mm -hmm. uh, a Thanksgiving tradition in the 1800s. The first person who bowled three strikes in a row during the week of Thanksgiving or Christmas, depending, uh, would get a live turkey to take home for dinner. Oh. Huh. That's oh. pretty cool. So bowling it's... alleys used to keep like live <laughs> poultry yeah. on hand. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. And hope that pro bowlers don't just show up out of nowhere like, I'm here for my turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm only here because I really I'm just the bowling doesn't pay <laughs> as much as I thought it would and they're starving. Mm. The family is starving. That's crazy. I, I actually have a friend who's a pro bowler. She uh she's a, a friend of uh Jeremy and Jeanette. Who are good friends of the of the of the show, and she will not go bowling unless there's money on the line. Really, like, you can't invite her to bowl unless you're willing to to put some money on it. Yeah. What if it's like a buck? I don't know. I don't know if she'll go for like just any money or if it has to be like substantial amounts. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I did enjoy Kingpin. Oh, with uh, what Bill Murray? Mm -hmm. And Woody Harrelson, Woody Harrelson. And, um, Randy Quaid. Yeah, I was going to say, one of them Quaid boys. <laughs> Randy Quaid. Yeah. Playing an Amish man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, he was Amish. It's been a long time since I've seen. Love that movie. Yeah, I have that movie. It's been a long time since <laughs> I've seen that movie. Yeah, Randy Quaid is one of those that's a tough actor to, like, <laughs> really enjoy his works. <laughs> like, <it, laughs> You, you know, you you see him in the with the National Lampoons mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, as like the cousin of Chevy yeah. Chase, and he's always doing messed up trailer trash hick right. stuff. I mean, that's that's the character that uh, I don't know if it's a character. <laughs> right? I mean, because I mean, he played essentially the same guy in Independence Day, except with kids, yeah. with like responsible kids, and a similar guy in Richard Pryor's Moving. Mm. I don't know if y'all ever saw. Moving did with not Richard see. Pryor and Dana Carvey, and then he played the same guy in uh, not another teen movie. Mm -hmm, he sure mm -hmm. did, just with different. Ki it's just different kids that he's got every time. He's it just, just a like drunk he with might different be kids. Getting typecast, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or he's just that's just he nails yeah. that role we, we every need, time. We need a drunk trailer trash kind of guy. Is Randy Quaid available? He's always available. But that's perfect. You just can't film in the United States. <laughs> Because I think he like um, defected to Canada. 
something like that, avoiding taxes, really? something like that. Yeah, he's definitely uh, <clears throat> not allowed in the United States, or would that. get arrested if he came to the United States. Something like that. Hmm. But it's uh, wanted man. It's it's weird when you see these like the Hollywood kind of nepotism thing where you see like a brother and sister or the father and son or the mother and son or yeah. whatever, you know, like it's already kind of a dream for so many people to like break into any aspect right. of, of TV and film and stuff and like to just to just see it like be like, oh, if I'd have just been born into the right scenario right. out in East Hollywood or whatever, <laughs> like I'd be a shoe in. Oh, absolutely. Now, I, I think that all the time. However, if I had been born in New York or <clears throat> Los Angeles, my chances of being on the big screen would increase exponentially. Yeah. Like out here in Atlanta, your chances of being hired on as an extra are pretty high. I've done that, yeah. Yeah, because we do film a lot here. Oh, yeah. Because uh, well, of cheap taxes, I think. Yep, we have tax cheap, breaks. Cheap taxes for film in yeah. Georgia. Um Actually, where where I saw that that uh, concert the other night was right next to Pinewood Studios, where they've been filming uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Yep, yep. yep. So, uh, did not see any Avengers. Yeah, um, the, there's a show on Netflix out right now called Ozark. Okay, uh, with Jason Bateman, he like mm -hmm. is the director, star, um, and they shot a good portion of it yep. in Gwinnett County, and the Gwinnett County courthouse where. Some people that I know very well work um, is featured in there, and they were watching it the other day, and they saw it, and it's like really awesome and cool that hey, well, that's where I work. Did and they I get to be in TV. it? Like, are they in the background I don't think anywhere? So, no. no, I don't believe okay. so. But it used to be kind of a rare thing. Like back in the day, I remember thinking like how novel it was when a movie was filmed in Georgia. I'd go see oh, yeah. it even if it were an awful movie. Oh yeah, just to like oh. I know that interstate, or mm. oh, I went to that Waffle House one time, yep. you know that kind of thing. Now it's like you don't even know anymore. You're watching mm. so many shows that are filmed in yeah. rando Everywhere. locations, <laughs> and then they'll tell you that it's like, you know, oh, this is Alabama or whatever. Like, wait, no, that's Conyers. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, uh, see, a uh, Baby Driver, yeah, movie yeah. without uh, that. They yep. filmed a lot of the the scenes in Atlanta, so I yep. saw like a little clip and. Oh, well, seen, they're driving down a road that I used to take to work every have you seen single that day. Movie? No, not yet. It's a fantastic movie. I've I heard really it's awesome. Enjoyed it. Now, uh, someone was playing the soundtrack for me on mm -hmm. their phone, and it it is a catchy, catchy soundtrack. It's a really I was cool, really digging it. it. It's a Guy Ritchie movie, and and it's something that I've seen him do before, but he he played it a lot in this movie, where the uh, most of the scenes are are shot for the music, like things go in time with the music like gunshots are in time with the music and like steps and and just all kinds of stuff so and, it, it kind of has that flowing vibe to yeah it. And it's really cool and and you see a little bit in like Shaun of the dead um and some other stuff that he's done before but it was it was a big Wait. prominent part of this what who who filmed it Guy Ritchie. I don't know why I said that that he did in Shaun of the Dead because he did not do Shaun. Of the no, Dead. I'm like, it's um, either the Edgar Wright or, or yeah. Guy Ritchie. And it wasn't get, it wasn't Guy Ritchie who did this. It was Edgar Wright. I'm pretty sure that did. I don't Baby know. Look Driver. it up. Yeah, look it up on your All Magic right. Box there. Magic Box. Yeah, Guy I'm pretty Ritchie sure is uh, Lockstock and yeah, yeah, yeah. And Snatch. Uh, he did um, Kingsman, right? Guy Ritchie did. Did Kingsman? he do Kingsman? I you may wanna, have. I want to say that. I want to say the feel no. of the piece seems very Guy Ritchie to me. It could be. New Kingsman coming out pretty soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward for to it. I enjoyed that the first one. Yeah. Even though it was very, you know, it had like that sort of dry British. I mean, you know, how much America loves mm -hmm. dry British stuff in, in small doses. And Edgar was, Wright. It was Edgar Wright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and so I, I was right in my assessment, just the wrong person. Um, but yeah, Edgar Wright did the same thing in, in Shaun of the Dead a little bit. And then also in this movie. Ooh. Well, now it got weird because you're not saying anything. Oh no, I I I really want to know if I was right on that. That's my fault. On what? Yep. On the the Kingsman. Oh, King, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm just trying to let him know if he was right. No, the director was Matthew Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn oh. was the director of the Kingsman, the Secret Service. So I am shit. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful. Yeah. Yep, and you waited around in silence for that. Well, because I wasn't sure. You know, yeah. a lot of times I say stuff. And I'm sure of it. And, I don't, and you just I don't leave it there. Wait. Yeah, right. I don't need to wait. But this time, <laughs> I obviously, I wasn't sure. 
and now I feel like an asshole. I'm just going to leave it out there in the mythos. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure, so don't even worry about it. Right. But anyway, I like the Kingsman. I'm glad that they have a second one coming out. Yeah. Um, and I like they're kind of making fun of America with it. <laughs> it's funny. It looks funny. I do remember the end of the first Kingsman. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, they show you a vagina very briefly. Mm-hmm. And you don't I, say. I felt like that was um, a little more risque than necessary. But well, was it a vagina or was it a butt? It was definitely a butt. <laughs> That featured a vagina. That I'm pretty they, sure featured a vagina. Yeah. <laughs> Introducing oh. butt featuring. <laughs> so. Delightful movie. I enjoyed it. But yeah, Baby Driver. Go check it out if you haven't yeah, already. Yeah, I definitely want to yeah. check that out. Make that, make that a priority. Um, did you ever see Road Trip yep. from back in the day? Breckin Myers, yep. Dom Green. Filmed um, right along uh, that uh, 78 down there. And, yeah, and yeah. A little bit in Gwinnett County. A little bit in Gwinnett County. There was a, a place called the Gwinnett Diner. Mm-hmm was literally a, a walk away from where I used to live when I first moved to Georgia, yeah. and it was filmed there. I yeah. ate there a few times. Pretty sure food. UGA is the campus. That it is, is, yeah. There's, I'm pretty sure parts. that Brad almost got hired at the Gwinnett Diner. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there's parts in the movie where they're they're shooting inside the stadium, and it's it's clearly UGA Stadium with the hedges and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. The first film that I can think of, My Cousin Vinny, mm-hmm. and that actually won an Academy Award for Marissa Tomei. Yep. Yep. Um, for, Great movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was Great Monticello, actress. I believe that that was filmed on the the courthouse at Monticello, Georgia. Um, fled with uh, Lawrence Fishburne yeah. and Stephen Baldwin, and 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 a Baldwin. Yep, one they, of the Baldwin did, boys. They did a bit a bit of that on on stop uh, Stone Mountain. Yep, yep. Well, stop of Stone Mountain. On stop Yeah, but that was back in the day when Deliverance. Like, you know, there was probably only like a hundred movies being made in a year, and now there's probably so many more. So yeah. many like, movies. Like the world craves entertainment, and yeah. so like movies are just being popped out every week from all over the place. True. Yep. It's great for the economy, though. So yeah. they tell me. <laughs> and I and you would think that it would mean that like a whole lot more people would be in like the middle class of the business. You know, yeah. that with so much more churning out, that there would just be more people in lighting and sound, and more people yeah. in stage prep and costuming, and, and just you know, like ah, I'm an actor. I love what I do. Yeah, it's like a random TV show. I only make thirty five thousand right. dollars, but I love what I do. I'm happy. Yeah. You know, like that's. But the, I mean, I mean it, it is fairly common once you move a little bit closer to the city, especially in like you know. The Decaturs and the uh, like, just those outlying cities from downtown. You do have a lot of the film industry going on, but they choose to like right inside the perimeter because it's easier access to just about anywhere. Mm. Now, I do know like we we know several people that worked in various shows. Uh, our our friend Dustin has worked in just tons of stuff. He's he's actually worked on several things we've mentioned tonight. He's worked on Ozark. He's worked in. Uh, on Avengers and stuff like that, like he's Walking done, Dead, Walking Dead, um, just tons of stuff. I've he's and, actually talked about coming on the show, yeah. Uh, but like all of our friends, apparently he's allergic to Tuesdays. <laughs> well, also, I mean, I think a lot of them are allergic to uh, Dawsonville. Right, uh, it's also Dawsonville. Yeah, <laughs> there's just something about here, <laughs> something about far. It's yeah, far. It's far, and and I get and but at the same time, a lot of people are just busy, like especially with his job. Like he works crazy, ridiculous hours, just depending on the needs of the show that he's on or the movies that he's on or whatever. But one of the things I've noticed is that he'll tell me about working on something, and I realize that he worked on so many things, and all the same people are working on the, all the same stuff. So it's not that you know, it's it's not that surprising to me that there's not more people doing it because all the same people are doing it. Like all the people are working on all the things. Yeah, it's kind of like our own little little Britain. Uh, entertainment industry where everything in it seems like a lot of English uh, produced shows have a lot of the same yeah. actors and actresses like they, they get involved it may also be because it's an island but um, mm-hmm. and they got a pretty decent population for the do. amount of space that they have but I'm pretty sure Britain is only a little bit bigger than like like Georgia and South Carolina like they're not a vast 
right. country like United States is. Yeah. And there are people that in every state of the United States, I imagine, that would like a chance yeah. you know, to be a, a game show host or a, <laughs> I'm going to be a star. You know, just to some level. Yeah. And there's, I mean, you know, like there's so many shows that probably get like, oh, a thousand viewers a week, but still it's better filler for airtime than other things. Right. So that's all I want. I just want one of those, one of those little tiny shows. Yeah. So I, we got to get famous. Or we're working on it. I've, I talked to a friend. Uh, Ethan, we've mentioned him a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, he works for the very important stock exchange program. Okay. But he told me that if we wanted to uh, to go viral, mm -hmm. we should uh, make funny clips that are about three to five minutes in length and then just put them up all over like Reddit and places like that so that communities can just grab a hold of them yeah. and make fun of them and <laughs> delight over them. And basically you want all of that reaction because it all spins yeah. in your favor. Okay. So we should start doing that. We yeah. start making small, funny clips. Small clips. Small clip videos. Because I've noticed our clips that Brian produces for us, mm -hmm. like our like... S&M Brian. S&M Brian. He likes yeah. to take little pieces of our show and yeah. be like... This is a piece of their show. That was possibly, actually good. Yeah, <laughs> possibly his favorite moment. I don't yeah. know how he selects, but <laughs> he selects a little piece of the show. And I've mm. noticed that like the shows themselves, an hour in length, will get upwards of 50, 60 views. Yeah. Whereas those little clips within just, a, get a lot. just like a week or two yeah. will be upwards in like 200 views. So, I mean, there is definitely a point there. It's hard oh, yeah. to keep the world's attention. Yeah. Oh yeah. Brief. We have to be just bite size mm -hmm. snack comedy. Yep. Nuggets of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Right. I like nuggets of entertainment. Mm -hmm. I like nuggets. And of chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You don't. You don't. You don't get a whole breast in like a cardboard sleeve and then dip it in the barbecue go to, sauce. Go to town on it. No. No. You want nuggets. I think. I think I would do that though. I probably would do that. I get a cardboard <laughs> sleeve of breast. Just, yeah, uh, or just a just one single breaded southern breast, style fried boneless boneless breast yeah. just in a cardboard box. I would eat it. <laughs> Dipping it in a barbecue it. sauce cup that big. Yeah. Oh yeah, mega tenders. Or maybe some like a uh, buffalo sauce. Like a oh yeah, oh spicy ranch. Ooh. Yep, all about it. Yep. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. So okay. today, Spe uh, you know, speaking earlier, we talked about being hot. Brian, uh, SNM Brian actually put up a clip from his or uh, a picture from his, his car or something. And uh, he's down in Orlando. It was like 104 down there. Ooh. Like, so. Yikes. As bad as it is up here, I feel really bad for SNM Brian. SNM Brian, our heart Florida? goes out to you. Central Florida. Central Florida, terrible. Orlando, man. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. Because they don't get the good uh, ocean breeze. Mm -mm. That ocean breeze will keep you cool. Yeah, not Orlando, Florida. Just concrete and sunlight. So. All right. Well, I'm an asshole. Okay. Are we supposed to talk about that while you go to the bathroom? Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Jason. Uh huh. Is an asshole. Right. Yes. No one's I, disputing this. No, we just established it. Heard it from uh, the man himself. Yeah, from the horse's mouth. Yes. Uh, so I'm an asshole. Uh, quote Jason Martin, 2017. Uh -huh. Write that down. Writing it down. Yeah. Oh, it's happening right now. <laughs> uh, uh, well, I feel him though. Like I, I, we we had Japanese tonight for dinner, and I filled up. Yes. On some delicious hibachi food. I had some delicious sushi. Right. Mmm, that was tasty. See, I'm not a fan of sushi. And see, I, and, I've always liked. And I will sushi. say this: I have at least tried sushi. You I'm have. Not, I'm not one of these assholes that like, eh, I don't like it, but they've never tried it. I've tried it. It was not my thing. Now, the question is, how many different kinds of sushi have you tried? Admittedly, I've only tried like one, maybe two. I, okay. And I don't even remember what they were. It's been so long. Well, see, for me, like, I don't like all kinds of sushi. There's, they just vary so much. You know, right. they have some that have, you know, some sushi is just like, it's, I don't know if you would quite consider it sushi mm. or sashimi. I can never remember the distinction, so I'm not going to try and pretend like I do. Yeah. Um, but there are some that have like cooked shrimp or like tempura shrimp, and the the roll is like, has a little fried crispy stuff on it. Mm -hmm. Eel and eel sauce is fantastic. Okay. But 
yeah, just like a slab of raw fish on some rice or, you know, the cucumber, asparagus, cream cheese all mixed in there. Not everybody's into that. You right. Know? But they have so many different ingredients, so yeah. many different kinds of sushi. That's crazy. And I was actually going to suggest sushi as the topic. Oh, really? Yeah, because we had ate eat it. Yeah, that's right what we were... We had we eaten it right we just not long it ago. It. We had been done eating it. Yeah, we done Like, I'd ate that sushi a while back. But yeah, like, like I said, I... Admittedly, I've not tried a whole lot of different types of sushi, and maybe I would find one that I like, but so far, nope. Not digging it. I feel like it's one of those... It's it's like people that like craft beer. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they go to all these different places... They join different beer clubs yeah. and stuff like that at different restaurants. And they go to these and they like, oh, let me try this. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me try this. And there's like a thousand easily, you know, right. craft beers. And so like it's their mission to basically check off yeah. all those boxes. And I feel like sushi is very similar to that. See, I guess, I guess my deal with sushi is that like when I go to a Japanese place, I already know I love hibachi food. Like, I love me some steak and chicken and shrimp and scallops. And, and why like wouldn't that. you? And and I know that's what I'm going to get, and I'm going to fill up on that. And so I'm not super excited to go, like, try something else, like something that I, I might not enjoy and might actually put me off my appetite for what I'm going to, what I know I'm going to like. Right. And at 8 to $15 a roll, it's kind of a pricey experiment. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it could get really pricey, and I could be like, this is disgusting, and I hate it, and I hate everybody here. Yeah, I so. think that... Japanese places. If I had a Japanese place, I would actually have like like a weekly platter sort yep. of that was like try these, you know, and that way you like can, a sampler kind like of like a platter, sampler yeah. kind of thing. And so that's something can, I thought about when we were when we were there tonight. It was like, man, it wouldn't it, like cuz they they showed us the the sushi menu and it's front and back of like colors, like 20 something things on each side. Mm -hmm. And like how do I know if I like eel or if i like tuna or if i like steelhead or whatever you or know yellow tail or, or yellow like there's so many things and i like i <laughs> so would what, what well, i would recommend doing is you know there's all kinds of different like fun rolls but sushi is also sometimes it's just that ball of sushi rice with just like some fresh fish on top of it, right yeah. on top of it and that's very good too and it's a good way to like you can get individual pieces that way because it's not a whole roll they have to make and slice right. up they just yeah. Boop, boop. But I would think you know if they Try made a few of them. if they made like a few sampler platters, knowing that multiple tables are going to get this sampler platter, they you know make you know one roll of each thing, mm -hmm. and then each person you know each sampler platter gets one of each of these and things. And don't prepare it until the dinner rush. Just right. make like enough samplers or whatever so that you've got like five on hand yeah. or whatever, and that that gives somebody that new sushi person right. You know, like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this tastes like. So let me try these flavors. Right. And then you can sort of direct me mm -hmm. off of this where I might like to go from there. Yeah. See see that Japanese restaurants? Check that out. You can have that for free. Compliments yeah. of Talkie Box. Compliments of Talkie Box. For the low, what, low for price free? of subscribe today. <laughs> subscribe today. Yeah. Subscribe and watch every video we've ever made. And then make your employees do the same thing. Yep, that's important. It's the only way this will work. <laughs> yeah, because you have to train your staff. Yeah. They have to be champions of the product. Yep. Speaking of which, we had a, a brand new server tonight. Yeah. It was her first night on. I think she did a very good job. I thought she did, too. I thought that she was very attractive. Also attractive, yes. Uh, she did charge me for a $2 drink that I did not have. You're just you being fixed. bitter. You, you got that fixed. I, God, yeah. you're just being so bitter right well, now. Well, I mean, it's it's not like I wouldn't I mean, have gotten it fixed. Like, I live in a world where I can be like, I didn't drink this. Yeah. I'm not paying for it. <laughs> like, you say, but you got it fixed as though, like, I could have left there. No, like, you, you will pay could've. for that. You could have You could have just said, like, you know what? I'm I'm not even. But it, it was it. it was barely an issue. You're like, oh, I didn't pay for this. She's like, oh, you're right. You did, or, you know, I didn't order this. She's like, oh yeah, I don't yeah. know why that's even there. I mean, delightful person. It wasn't an issue. Very really. gracious. Yeah. But you know, it was kind of a simple thing. Oh man, he's going so hard right now. I I'm <laughs> just saying, I have served. In fact, everybody here has served. Yeah. And this we've all true. probably been pretty good at it. Yeah. Now, I don't. I, wonder, I was very good. I wonder if this was her first. Like this is clearly her first night 
at that restaurant. What if it was the first night serving at all? It's possible. Now, she was way more delightful, uh, more beautiful, and less awkward than the manager that came <laughs> over. He was super two awkward. Two seconds. He was doing a table touch, yeah. which is where a manager goes to the dining room and basically like just allows the people in the dining room to know there is There's a, a manager, manager there. Hi, manager here. Stuff. How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> But he came up and was just oh, put so us awkward. all on guard. Yeah. Like, I thought I was getting arrested or something. Yeah, that felt like we were in trouble. Hey, how's it going today, guys? And he walked up, hands on hips. Like, just he automatically. Up posted up at our table. Like, just was, in case you we guys were, were thinking about trying anything. <laughs> and to be clear, we were the only table there. Like, we were in a section where there was no other people around. They had, The hibachi tables were active. Yeah, but yes. our dining section was empty. Yeah, he came directly to us. Hands on hips, posted up, and he was... Uh, and it wasn't just like a friendly, like, hey guys, has everything been good so far? All right, well, if you need anything at all, do not hesitate. My name's... <laughs> and you just have to let me know. I'll be over here before you can think twice. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, or, or whatever cheap thing it, he said. It felt like, either one, he didn't trust us, or two, he was just trying to like get his face out there just in case she screwed up something. Right. Like, hi, how's it going? I'm the manager. We may And I'm just here to uh, you know, make sure it was that your uh, face that, that, <laughs> that your that your experience is good. Uh, you know, we really appreciate your business and uh, uh well I'll be checking on you periodically throughout the meal to Which make sure he you're did still not. Enjoy, no. enjoying everything. That was the most he ironic never came part. Back. He came after we had been seated for four and a half seconds. Yeah. Like and introduced you guys, himself. I was already there. You guys <laughs> just sat down, just got in your menus. I don't even think you put in your order yet, like your nope. drink order yet. No, she, we hadn't even seen the like. We had. We seen had. Her. No, no, no. Yeah, we we saw. We her. got our drinks. She went to get our drinks. He came That's over right. yep. immediately. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, he was talking about how he's going to be checking on us periodically. And so, one, not only is that not how you do a table touch, you yeah. wait until like I've had a chance to have an experience. <laughs> right? You but can't find out how my experience was. In, like, you know, how was the walk through the parking lot? Pretty hot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's the last you'll see of me. And then he just, and then he just like didn't even yeah. stop by the rest of the time. No, he and did. it makes me feel like maybe he had gotten in trouble for not talking to tables. Like oh, this guy does it. not talk to tables. You have to talk to every table. Like, all right, well, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'll talk to him as soon as they walk in here. Right Boom, done and done. Ass in the seats. I'm in their face. That's how it goes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, a little bit of awkward now, lingering. Now, to be honest, like you, you guys had your backs to most of the restaurant. He he walked by several times. Uh, that y'all probably didn't see, but he didn't like he barely looked at us to be honest. Like, and he definitely, like you said, never came back to us to talk to us about anything, which is fine. It's not like we had an issue. I think so, he was keeping an eye on us. Yeah, maybe we look like troublemakers. I mean, we do. We're all bearded and white. I'm -ish. under the impression we were the three most handsome people in that entire restaurant. Oh, Jason. That could be it. I'm almost positive. I didn't get to see everyone there. There could have been a really sharp-looking fella in the back. <laughs> but but from my, my perspective... So you think the managers just want to come by and check yeah. on the, the hot guys? Is that yeah, what you think just that? making sure that the beautiful people are comfortable. <laughs> right. Hey, beautiful people, uh, just wanted to say, in, in stay the beautiful. That we <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if y'all are familiar with Dawsonville, but it ain't like... You know, keep yeah. Gwinnett Mo clean models and beautiful. Don't live here. <laughs> you know, it's like keep Dawson County plump and fun. <laughs> yeah. Keep Dawson County plump. Keep and Dawson <laughs> plump and fun. That's that's their logo. That's their slogan on the water tower. Yeah, plump and fun. <laughs> oh. Name of the episode right there. Plump and fun. <laughs> plump and fun. <laughs> plump and fun. <laughs> That won't that won't be misconstrued. H HR plumping fun. Yeah. Speaking of that, we were we were discussing um, Jason Martin. <laughs> <laughs> we were discussing uh, like the the match dot coms and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had, and so plump and fun would bring me. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think well, round we, <laughs> round robin that gets us right over. Now to is that the, what you well, put in your profile? Or is we that all just for? learned some very uh, <laughs> private information about. Well, not private. <laughs> But definitely some uh, uh, maybe unbeknownst information about Jason. Right. I mean, unbeknowingly, I, I like to be uh, you know like a, an all access lover. You know, like, there's nothing I wrong don't with that. Segregate based on color or or really weight. I prefer they don't weigh a lot more than me, <laughs> just in case a fire breaks out. I do want to be able to save them. Yeah, it's yep. kind just of a, 
<laughs> just for like <laughs> for emergencies. In case. For just in case. Like <laughs> I'd like to be able to someone You don't want to get rescued. Right. You want to do the rescuing. There you go. That's fair. There you go. And that is that's it? sexist. I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, a little it is, maybe. it is it's definitely sexist. I don't know. <laughs> and I I don't disagree with <laughs> nope. that. Nope. Hashtag feminism. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. yeah, have you ever been on like a dating site or a dating app or anything like that? Not since Prodigy, uh, the band. No, before that, the uh, the web browser. Okay, uh, like America Online, right? Prodigy, uh, Earthlink, Netscape, Netscape. <laughs> you know. The big ones, <laughs> all the all the important the ones that are totally still the around. The long-lasting <laughs> companies, Net that, Zero, that hung out with us and really pushed through the envelope. <laughs> uh, yeah, all those guys, like uh, they would have little like uh, dating chat room kind of things. Okay. The yeah, chat yeah. rooms, yeah, chat. Oh man! And then you could go on to all the different themed <laughs> chat rooms and right. really troll people hard. Like now, everybody, you you really only troll on like. The Facebooks and stuff like that. Because it's so much harder to build a whole profile to troll somebody on a dating app, whereas in a chat room, you just say you're something and then just go on there and pretend for a little yeah. bit. Mm -hmm. You don't yep. have to add pictures and build a bio and you know actually go out and hunt people. They're just there. They're just people there to talk to right there. Yeah. yeah. Done. See, I've done I've done the dating sites and dating apps though. I've which, I've done a and, few. Which ones do you use? I, I I don't use any currently, but I've been on like Match. dot com and what was it? OK Cupid, I think. And uh, I'd never met anybody from any of them though. Like I've I've messaged a couple people here and there, back and forth, never came to anything. So you never did the the Tinder thing. I've been on Tinder. I've been on uh, uh, Bumble. Bumble. Now, now Tinder yeah. is just where you take a picture of your genitalia and you post like, like stuff about your genitals, uh -huh. right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. That's also Almost. Snapchat, I think. Right? Yeah, that's also Snapchat or Snapchat. Yeah, because I think Snapchat is supposed to have other functions as well. It's not just dick pics. It's, I mean, probably that's where it started from, right? Because all the messages is get deleted automatically. Do they still do that? Mm hmm. Oh. They all get de deleted automatically unless you dis choose to save it. And if you save it, Snapchat lets the other person know, like, just so you know, this person just saved what you said mm -hmm. or save that picture you just sent. <laughs> so they have it now. Yeah, that's This person really but you, that but, dick pic. but you know they have it. And you make sure they know you know you that they have it. You know you know? You know. Okay. So, so here's the thing, right? Yeah. Like, for some reason, I guess guys think it's. I don't know if it's comical or if they legitimately think that their penis is sexy or whatever. <laughs> I don't I don't really understand like the perspective of the person that sends a picture of their dick. Mm -hmm. However, because it is a thing in our society, I've always wondered like how do we soup that up? Like how do we take what is and make it better? Uh. And so Okay. So you have, you have options? Like, have glamour options. shots. Okay. All, All right. right. Glamour shots. Yeah, That's yeah. sort of similar to what I was thinking. Um, dicks on parade, okay. right? Where you actually like, you dress up your penis yeah. and themed appropriately like little clothes that you make <laughs> for it. And you actually like put your penis into different scenarios. Kind of like right. the, the Travelocity gnome. Yeah. Kind of like Dinner for Schmucks. Kind of like Dinner for Schmucks. With, with the dead rats, only penises yeah. maybe? <laughs> yeah. Like you could even set up one where it's like, oh, it's the the old popcorn joke where you like, you cut the hole in the bottom of right. the popcorn, but you could like, you know, <laughs> glue a bunch of popcorn to it or something. You know. See, I was thinking like, you're going like above and beyond what I was thinking. I was thinking like maybe stickers or maybe a little bit of like body paint, but you're like, let's make a whole production. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like a I shadow mean, box, yeah. a diorama. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I want my dick to look like Negan hitting hitting one of the walking dicks dead on guys. parade shadow box. All right. Like or like talkie box shadow box. <laughs> or like, or like uh, who's that uh, fellow that jumped out out of the shuttle onto the moon? Oh, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. Okay. It's not Lance or Louie. Because those were the first ones that came to my head. <laughs> and I was like, no, those are not the right Armstrong. You know, Armstrongs. you could do Lance Armstrong. You're just going to have to remove a, a testicle. Yep. Yeah. And I could do Louis Armstrong, but we all know how racist that <laughs> would be. Yeah, it, but it just completely changes the meaning of dick in a box. So 
Like, we need to try and market it somewhere else. But, but right, like, nobody <laughs> thinks your dick pic is sexy. Nobody. No, it's no. not. It's, it's usually possible. just embarrassing. So why don't we as a society... Like, no one wins with a dick pic. Exactly. Like, no one wins. So, well, sometimes the person that, that you send it to wins in court because of it, but that that's... Right. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> like legislature aside. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody won a settlement. I'm yeah. just saying, if you're going to send someone a picture of your penis, dress it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, make a little top hat for it. You know, glue a little cane. You know, maybe a beard, maybe a beard, <laughs> give it kind of an Abraham Lincoln thing going yeah. on or, you know, there's, there's so many creative ways there to are options show off out there. your genitals. I feel like if they're going to reject you, they should at least be <laughs> impressed. <laughs> now, some people take it pretty far though. Some people will go so far as to uh, put tattoos on down there. Uh, like hentai some... or like actual... I mean, like, you henna. like 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 a Muppet Gonzo face I did. tattooed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Hentai is a totally different thing. <laughs> totally, not totally. I mean, different. it's a different it's, thing. It's <laughs> slightly different. I'm talking about like a Gonzo from the Muppets face yeah. tattooed right at the waistline. Right. right. And then uh, it doesn't have all the pieces on the tattoo. Some parts are filled in. And see, that's some a, assembly required. And that's a double entendre because then you could film Gonzo porn. Entendre. Uh, Which I think is like rough cut porn. I think that's a thing. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. I've heard the term, but I, I honestly don't know what it actually means. I think gonzo filmmaking is basically where it looks like you're... I'm not looking that up. Please look it up. <laughs> I think it's where you... you it's like war journalism. Like it's it's like, very like, like gorilla. <laughs> yeah, it's like very rough. Like it's shaky camera work. It's, right. it's basically... Right. Come on, Google. To don't give like um. Don't look too much authenticity. Don't look too much into this, Google. I, here's what I imagine it to mean. Before you tell me what it is, this is what I imagine it to mean. So Gonzo of the Muppets has like the, this long kind of nose, right? right? Yes, he's the blue and one. And so I get this feeling that that it's it's almost like the the video is done from Gonzo's perspective, where you see the eyes and the nose, or in this case, you're seeing it from the perspective of where you just see the penis, and that and that's the perspective that you're getting of in the porn. Oh, it's like a belly button camera. Sure. All right, so here we go. Because <laughs> that's an interesting idea now right? that you just talk about it, like belly button cameras but, in porn. That, so, so who's right? All right, so a uh, gonzo, uh, according to the Urban Dictionary, uh-huh. uh, both wrong. When it comes ah. to pornography, the term gonzo refers to a style of filmmaking pioneered in the 1990s by directors such as Seymour Butts and Ben Dover. Gonzo porn took the storyline out of adult movies and headed straight for the sex. So oh. it's just a it's just a sex video, no storyline, okay. no content. Oh. It's just like here is a penis, and let's do some stuff with it. Okay, oh, okay. Anytime I've ever heard of it, so, so it's porn without plot. Porn without plot. Mm. All right, and I typically like without you know makeup breaks or uh, stuff like that. Apparently. Okay. Huh. All right. Well, learn something new every day. It's important. Yeah, why, why that, call it that then? That's ridiculous. Well, maybe Gonzo meant something before he was a Muppet. Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Gonzo got his name from another thing that existed. Uh, well, it also means uh, a particular style of journalism used most famously by writer Hunter S. Thompson in the '60s and '70s, in which the journalist becomes a part of the action. A natural extension of Tom Wolfe's new journalism, based on the idea that fiction and journalism are both a means to the same end, and that the best journalists have always known this. Yeah, that was my first exposure to Gonzo. Also, yeah. a blue character on the Muppets, Muppets with a very phallic nose. Well, all right, <laughs> that was my first exposure right. to Gonzo, but Hunter S. Thompson afterwards. Okay. <laughs> okay. So well, you learn something new every day. I so did. Gonzo porn is porn without plot. Like mm -hmm. Porn without plot. Apparently I don't know if y'all are familiar, but back in the 70s, like, porn was plot heavy. Right. And I have actually seen some pornographic movies from the 70s that were well written. Really? Like intriguing storylines, like murder mysteries and shit, where you're really wondering who did it. Oh, wait, we got to wait 15 minutes for them <laughs> to fuck real quick. All right, come on, guys. Yeah. Come, I got to know. I mean, come, come on. I got to know who did it. You're really drawing this out. 
Well, see, like I feel like I want to change the name of the episode. I, we, we're, we're getting a lot of good ones in here. I so personally, not, not I like plump and fun. Plump and fun is good, but I also like plot heavy porn <laughs> uh, and dicks on parade. Both are <laughs> both are good. I'm. Oh man, I feel I, like those I'm going for plot on plot on plot plot, plot heavy, heavy porn. porn. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say plot on parade. That's not how that works. <laughs> see, this we're going to get a lot more hits. <laughs> on a video named Plot Heavy Porn. Then Plump and Fun? Oh, I don't know. We might get equal hits on both. <laughs> These are all good titles. I'll write that down. <laughs> <laughs> These are all good titles. We'll just use we all three. Yeah, we can't go with that. <laughs> it's just not nearly as fun. That's going to be the or tags plump. in it. It's like Plump, Fun, <laughs> Hashtag Porn, plump and fun. Dicks. Have fun with that, s and Brian. Yeah. <laughs> Turn off <laughs> your filters. Costume <laughs> costume dick pics. It's a real thing. I guess. I'm still thinking about costumes I could make. You're For still your thinking dick. about dicks. Yeah, but my own <laughs> specifically. Okay. Oh. All right. Like All a right. like an Uncle Sam for Fourth of July. You guys get it. Sure. Yeah, I'll get it. Every now and then when we're making this. <laughs> When we're, when we're on the show and we're talking about things, I think, I wonder if my parents are ever going to see this. And how would they feel? Because I, like, I, I mentioned you before, hope. They don't. I grew up in a very religious household. My parents didn't stop being religious at any point. So, like, you know, one day they're going to see these things like, David, they call me David, David, the things that you talk about on your show, that's not how he raised you. And then you would beg to differ. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> You're like, well, this is how I ended up. Yeah, this is, this Mom, is how I am. Dad, I love so. you both, but you can't argue that I am, in fact, a product of my environment. Right. And your crazy religious overtones have made this. <laughs> uh, Maybe if you'd have just backed off a little bit or possibly moved me out of that podunk swamp town. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing they moved like me a, into that swamp town. That's the, the worst part of it. <laughs> Nothing is like that a podunk swamp town to make I, you want to break out of your shell. I was born like on the coast, and then we moved inland, which is the worst. Mm. Like when you're born next to the beach, you don't want to not be at the beach anymore. Mm -mm. Random strangers are constantly coming to your town because it's better than their town. Yeah, and then you moved away from that mm -hmm. <laughs> because of all those strangers. Nah, it's be closer to grandparents. Oh, but. Family, yeah. Ugh, why didn't grandparents move closer to the beach? You know, right? That's what that. That's what I said the whole time. Like, why can't they just move here? Yeah, let's. I sell recognize their house. that they've had this house for since it was built, since this bit town became. But still, <laughs> come on, let's be realistic here. Who's gonna have more you're fun? On, you're in a shittier town than me. But my parents are on a trip right now. Actually, they left today to go to Cal. They're, they're doing a round the country trip. Good for them. Yeah. Driving. Yep. That my parents are 75 and 76 years old, and they are doing cross-country. They are trying to piss off someone in every state. <laughs> that, yeah. that's, that's a bucket list. Yeah, their plan is being Mobile, Alabama tonight. They're going to New Orleans from there, because my mom has never been to New Orleans. She really wants to go. Don't know why. Um, yeah, it seems like 75 and or 76 <laughs> seems to be a little yeah. beyond New Orleans. Like yeah. the Grand Canyon is sort of where you would go. Yeah. Their, their last cross-country trip, because they've done this before, they went to like Mount Rushmore and stuff and saw you know, a lot of the, the Northwest. Uh, this time they're, going, they're, going, they're cutting across, going through New Orleans, going to Texas, over to California, visit family over there, and then I guess they're just going to come back around the top or something. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, my mom called me the other day. And left a voicemail because I didn't. My, my phone was updating, and when I finished, I had a voicemail from my mother. And I listened to it. You she, can say you didn't want to talk to her, Dave. No, I, I would have talked. Lying to her. to her hurts her feelings. She'll never see this. Don't worry. Yeah, true. Um, but no, she she left a message, and she's like, "Hey, I just haven't talked to you in a while, and I just wanted to call and see what's up. I don't really have anything to talk about. Your dad wrecked his truck. I was like, Oh, that sounds like something to talk about." <laughs> you did bring it up just now. And she's like, it's not totaled or anything, and he's fine. The other car flipped four and a half times. Like these are all things to talk about. <laughs> like, dad's Mom, on, dad's <laughs> on trial for manslaughter. Uh, just a second, you know that's that was right before I said goodbye. I love you. This is this is all like <laughs> just just like you these know are things to talk about. Yeah. Tell me more. Like she had no. She, oh, I guess I could tell him about the time where Dad almost died. I guess and he almost killed some people that he hit with his truck. 
He didn't want you to worry. <laughs> well, it's too late. Yeah. All right, David. Well, call me back. <laughs> so, so what about talkie box around the country? Like, let's say we're in Alabama. Let's what not. You, let's not do no, that. No, we are. We're oh, in Alabama. I okay. already said it. <laughs> Where do you want to? What do you want to see in Alabama? Uh, You're in Alabama. Any, any other state. <laughs> you want to see the quickest expressway <laughs> out. All right. Yeah. That's a thing in Alabama. No. Yeah. I'm willing to go there with you. <laughs> what about you, Justin? Something in Alabama that you would really like I will to see. I will say, so I've been to Alabama. I was there just couple, really? like a year or two ago. And there is, I think it's, I think it's the University of Northern Alabama. It is UNA, and they are their mascot is the Lions, and they are. I may have talked about this on the show before. They're the only college, as far as I know, on the planet that has actual lions for their mascots. I think you have mentioned that, at least to you, if not on the show. Yeah. But yeah, I would want to go to. Uh some place where Forrest Gump was filmed, or maybe just the Bubba Gump Shrimp Corporation. I'd be happy with that. Did they film a lot in Alabama? I know they filmed in Savannah. I don't know. I don't know where they filmed, but I know that there were parts that took place in Alabama. Okay. So I'd be fine with that. Uh... Yeah, nope, okay. nothing else. That's, <laughs> cool. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, they do have a little bit of coastal community, like a yeah. slice of... of the Gulf. Yeah, the the, the Gulf, Gulf Shores, right? In yeah, Alabama. I believe so. Uh, and it's pretty nice, you know. Um, it better be to make up for the rest of that state. But it's basically like, it almost looks like Alabama sort of annexed it from Florida. They were yeah. like, we're this close. Come on, Florida. Give us a stinking slice. Yeah. Mississippi, the, too, right? They, don't they yep. have like the other part of that? Little, yeah. Yeah. So it's it looks we're like, taking it. Yeah, it looks we're like taking basically it. like, come on, let us have a little coastal Just land. A little, little bit of coast. And they were like, all right, what are yeah. you going to give us? All the steel we need forever? <laughs> Done. Yeah. And it was probably a fair trade. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Dave, mm -hmm. drawing to a, to a close here, yeah, we just got what, a, what, a, what did you learn today? I learned that Jason has thought a lot about how to dress his penis up for pictures. Like a like lot a of lot. thought. See, like I, like I think for me it was more. just kind of confirmed. Like <laughs> I had my suspicions yeah. already, and then it just was that nail in the coffin. Right. It kind I of used to want to. I wanted picture. to do a calendar for an ex girlfriend actually, uh -huh. and and she thought it was a fantastic <laughs> idea. <laughs> she, Dick calendar. She she was gonna hang it like fridge. Yeah. Uh, I never <laughs> quite. I got a couple of shots, but I never quite got around to getting like twelve. Proper, fun, right. unique fun. shots. Yeah, because like the costume building gets kind of tedious oh, after yeah. a while. I can imagine. And, and you need a background. Yeah. Yep. It can't just be your legs. Like it's yeah. got to be. You got to put at least like a like some construction paper or something. <laughs> you guys get it, y'all. Yeah, of course. But see, but then you, you got to be careful because then the next thing you know, you're starting experimenting. You're making stop motion pictures, mm -hmm. and you're wasting a lot of time on your back, and your neck is going to start hurting after a while. <laughs> yeah. And then you know, if you ever want like. Um, you know, a full ensemble. Now you got to get all your friends involved, <laughs> and that gets uncomfortable and that very gets fast. Real uncomfortable. I mean, I just mean physically, like just like the worst game of Twister ever. Yeah, mm -hmm. the spaghetti legs with a bunch yeah. of dressed up dukes all in there. <laughs> <sighs> well, what'd you learn? <sighs> um. Well, I learned that your dad almost killed somebody. <laughs> Uh, using the Dave Montero, the very last thing we listened to is what I learned my thing from. <laughs> I, I went farther into the episode. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, what about goodness. you? Did you learn anything? Did I learn anything? Yeah. I learned that... Um, uh, no, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make uh, up something. Well, I learned that there's a lot of uh, dating apps that uh, apparently do not feature enough opportunity for jason to dress <laughs> up his penis yeah like i thought like cowboycrush.com or like uh where arabs .com or you know one of those sites yeah. that like you know they've got a very it sounds like they have a specific maybe, demographic maybe that one for cheaters what's that one ashley madison ashley madison maybe that one's got it for me maybe you need to check uh, that out oh 
what? You got you need to find you like a girlfriend or a wife some or somebody that you can cheat on to be on the site though. Mm. That's important apparently. So you got to or just catfish them with fake pictures of your mm-hmm. fake wife or your fake penis. Mhm. Fake wife, fake penis. Yeah. That's fake wife's I, penis. That's how I get it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Got it. So we're just don't close, cut we're don't cut any corners and use dildos. <laughs> Oh, uh, great way to close out the show, guys. Yeah, I thought we're so. doing this high brow. I usually this, like this to uh, to close out with something funny, yeah. but instead we decided to go with that. Yep. yep. So that's cool. So uh, wait, you you decide that, for us to end on something funny? Yeah, Man. I always say something funny at the end of the show. I mean, you say stuff. You say something. Mm-hmm. So that's it for the show tonight. Thanks for thanks for watching. Um, check out talkiebox.net. Find find get yourself a talkiebox mug or clock. Mm-hmm. Or, or just about anything. And go ahead and, and write in. Give us some suggestions on uh, small bits that you would like us to do. Um, subscribe. Yep. Um, like. Definitely. Tell Jason he's awful and cute, I guess. Yep. No, I think it's just awful. Oh, okay. Well, that's it for tonight. Y'all have a great night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>